differences. But I would also like to, uh, uh, to say a bit about the uh, structure of the feminine and the masculine side of the energy body and also your, uh, your caste system when it comes to the energy body. Um, this uh, uh, system is apparently uh, a system from uh, mid uh, the Middle America, the Toltec uh, tradition. Uh, but oddly enough, I did not uh, learn about it from books about the Toltec tradition, but from a clairvoyant in Riga. Um, because, uh, yeah, she could see lots of energies and she could also see what in this tradition is called the cocoon. And the cocoon is basically um, a part of the aura, which is relatively on the, uh, quite close to the body about yeah, like 20, 30 centimeters up to 40 centimeters away from the body. And this uh, cocoon can have various forms and shapes and structures within it, uh, which indicate a little bit how the energy flows uh, between you and your environment. So in this cocoon we have um, the, the feminine side of the of the energy, but also the masculine side of the energy, and both of these uh, masculine and feminine sides, they have been divided into four types. The uh, feminine side is called after the winds, so the west wind, the south wind, east wind, north wind, and the masculine side basically has four names. Uh, the the scout, uh, the uh, healer scientist, the man of action and man behind the screen. And also from the cocoon we can learn how powerful or how strong a person is and whether their talents are more towards uh, uh, dreaming or more towards stalking. So this is manifesting the energies into like downwards into lower vibrations or more into higher vibrations. So we will start with the most important part, which is the feminine side. Because the feminine side very much determines what is the, uh, the purpose of your energy body. What is it for? And all the others are more details of how to go about it. It's more about the, strat the, the tactics, while the feminine side is more about the strategy. Um, so the first type I would like to go into is the West Wind. Um, the West Wind type, if you look at the energetic cocoon, uh, is, uh, you can see it because the top of the cocoon, which should be over the head like this, has actually openings or um, holes in it, so it looks like the, uh, the person has a lot of spikes on top of their head or antenna on top of their head. Um, but it's not so much the spikes which go outward, but rather the absence of parts of the cocoon which uh, give a person the ability or which actually gives the head the ability to absorb energies from uh, higher dimensions. So it's very akin to, uh, to looking at the, uh, the crown chakra and the third eye. But even if your third eye and your crown chakra are very well developed, if the cocoon is blocking all the energies and they're just not reaching your, uh, your crown chakra or your third eye, then there's not so much to pick up. Um, so it is the, the functioning of this uh, uh, West Wind quality is very much a combination of having both the cocoon and also the good chakra development. And the person with this West Wind attitude is very sensitive to impulses from higher worlds, from higher dimensions. Um, so they're often uh, very uh, imaginative people, very creative people, um, who also are uh, inspired by egregores, by gods, by goddesses, uh, by various powers. So they often um, have this higher guidance, which helps them to move humanity along or move situations along. So this type of um, uh, of people are uh, 
generally quite open-minded, uh, quite playful, um, quite experimental um, in their nature. Um, the opposite is the east wind. So the east wind, instead of having a, a relative weakening of the cocoon, have a strengthening of the cocoon. And uh, it is much stronger around the area of their lower chakras. So roughly around the, uh, 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 the hips or the middle of the body, the cocoon bulges outward. So that the energies which are generated by the first chakra, second chakra and third chakra are much more predominant in the person's aura. So it, they are much better able to manifest uh, these energies of these uh, uh, bottom three chakras. So um, they are very capable of, in a way, uh, influencing the world around them according to their own desires, to their own willpower, to their own focus. Uh, so these people are by nature um, structuring the reality around them. Um, so instead of like being very open for outward impulses, they are usually very open and very connected with their own desires, with their own focus, with their own life purpose. Um, so they are usually quite stable people, who have a strong willpower, uh, a very distinctive style of doing things, and uh, the ability not to waver. So things happen, they don't change, they stay focused, they keep their focus in the same, same way. Uh, they're not upset by anything, um, they can just continue and go on. Um, and what you find if people can manage to combine these two opposites, so they have both the, the impulses and the inspiration of the west wind and the, the focus and stability of the east wind, then they're often great creators. Um, people like Leonardo da Vinci was probably a person like that who has on the one hand this inspiration but also the skill, the focus and the determination to turn his dreams into realities, into drawings, into yeah, prototypes, into all kinds of uh, things. And um, it is not in the view of the Toltec tradition necessary for a person to develop all these qualities if you just can cooperate. So if one person has these brilliant ideas and other people are very focused and very good technicians who can turn it into reality, then just by cooperating it can also work. But any in a way, greater energy body or any team needs to be balanced, it needs to have all these qualities within, them, within itself. So, um, I will now move to the north and the south wind type. So the north and the south wind type they're all they're both in a way um, shown by having a relative weakness um, in the chest area so that the energies from outside can come much closer to the heart chakra and uh, the difference between a north wind and a south wind is what is done with these energies once they reach the heart chakra. So the south wind type allows these energies which come in from the outside connect to the heart to move down, while the north wind allows these energies which come to the heart to move up. So basically you experience the world outside of yourself, the people outside of yourself, either through your higher chakras or through your lower chakras. So the north wind um, uh, in a way uh, has these energies interact with the throat area which is usually your moral filter, your cultural filter. So you tend to judge people like this is right or this is wrong um, or they're dark or evil or they're good and pure. Um, and then it goes up to, this, uh, to the third eye. Then the third eye you learn uh, really to understand the other person. Why are they do acting like that? Um, what is their motivation? Um, so they're generally quite critical, uh, also quite analytical, um, but also quite sensitive. Um, so they're usually quite good at analyzing a situation. Um, if you have a person with whom the energy flows downward, 
uh, then the outside energies interfere or they can even overwhelm your own natural impulses of your own will so that often your own willpower becomes like either influenced or sometimes totally overpowered by the will or the desires and the needs of others. Um, so people with this south wind quality, they are often very natural uh, healers, um, people who are very good at taking care of other people, uh, nursing other people, helping other people, supporting them, uh, creating a nice atmosphere, very hospitable people. Um, in our modern society we find that people who have either a west wind or an east wind quality they tend to do quite well in society because they're innovative and, or they're focused and yeah this is generally a good trait in uh, our yeah, modern economical system but people who have a north wind or a south wind quality they often find it very difficult um, because people with the south wind quality they have no real ambition they just want to help others they are more followers and they often tend to end up in very low paid jobs uh, at least in the Netherlands the healthcare is very uh, long hours, little money um, and a lot of work is unpaid actually uh, but people do it because of their, their they have a big heart and they want to help other people and this yeah, goodness is often exploited to get cheap labor um, North Wind people also find it very difficult because of the egos which yeah, govern our consciousness. Nobody likes to be criticized, nobody likes to be told that what they're doing is evil or wrong or incorrect or foolish or stupid and uh, therefore the North Wind, uh, people with the North Wind quality find it very difficult to really be themselves, to be their natural selves and still to have enough support and love and um, to be able to get on in life. So. Our culture makes it difficult for these types of beings. And if we look more or less at like what yeah, types of, um, uh, of people incarnate, they're all quite equally divided, all these four qualities, all these four winds. So basically half of people find it difficult to adjust to our modern society. So we should try to adjust our society so all four types of um, the cocoon can really function well. So, before uh, Uncle, we... yes, the, the the microphone is still a bit hard uh, to to hear. So uh, sometimes I cannot hear your words. Uh, I, I'm not sure why, but I tried like five or six mic um, uh, um, headsets at home, <laughs> but it's really not my headset. It, I think it's your microphone. Okay, I'll put my microphone a little bit closer. Um, is this working? Does this help? Yes, that helps. Thank okay. you. Yes. So, uh, before I move on to um, having a look at the masculine side of the, of the cocoon, are there more questions about the feminine side of the cocoon? Okay, so... Um, the masculine side of the cocoon has also four types. Uh, so the first type is called the, uh, the scout, or in a way the, um, the connector. Um, so this type of... Um, uh, so first of all the, the masculine energy is very much about uh, tactics, how to do it. It's not about what to do, this is what the feminine side does. And the scout is the person who, in a way, um, pre is preparing the situation or creating opportunities. So, um, a person with a scout quality, they often have a sixth sense for finding energies. That can be finding people, finding objects, finding places, um, being in the right place at the right time. So, they often have a sense of timing. Um, they have a very strongly developed intuition and um, because they can create optimal circumstances they don't have to do that much. Um, so for instance also the uh, druidic system of healing 
depends very strongly upon scout qualities. Because in Druidism, the, the person is basically seen as being connected to the land, and through this connection of the land, the person can get healed. So if a person is, for instance, infertile, well, you take that person and you put them on top of the correct hill, let them stay there at the correct phase of the moon, and they will be healed. So you yourself are not the one who is doing it, you're just using the flows of energy around you um, to create the effects you desire. Um, the uh, scout is often um, feels a little bit at a loss if there is no mission, nothing to do. Uh, because they always want to move, they always want to look, they always want to, to find. Uh, so they're often a little bit restless people. And often they um, also feel a, a role in the preparation. They want to find the right place or bring the right people together. And once they've done that, yeah, they feel, okay, there's nothing more, more for me to do. Because the process should run by itself. So this is the scout time. Um, then you have the healer scientist. Um, so the healer scientist is the person who is basically the, um, you could say, the, the, the technician. Um, he or she studies, has a kind of a internal mental model of reality and uh, tries to understand. So often these are people who have an interest in divination, in anatomy. Um, in working with cards or with tarot or Kabbalah, um, cosmology, um, so all kinds of systems help them to get a grip on things. Because if you understand the system, you know what result uh, your action will have. Um, so they can work as a healer, so to heal people, but also just to change situations or to manipulate uh, events. Um, and it's basically through their, um, yeah, through the quality of their internal models that with relatively small uh, amounts of power and effort they can create good effects with a yeah, few side effects. And uh, it's basically very much um, uh, the technique is understanding and working from this understanding and with this understanding. So, the third type is the man of action. Uh, the man of action is basically um, the person who is able to focus all their energies and turn all their being into um, a single flow. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. I'm not in the group, but I pushed a wrong button. <laughs> so. Okay. I hope the rest is still with me as well now. It's just, yeah, I think everybody's here now. Oh, okay. Call on hold. Okay, no, this is not going well. I will just call the group again. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yep. <laughs> Hello. 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 Sorry, my, my error. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was just discussing the, uh, uh, the man of action. So the man of action is the person who's able to turn their whole energy body into something which is focused on just a single purpose. Um, and by creating a very strong energetic flow, they in a way try to pull everything along with them. Um, so that, um, oh yeah, perhaps people can turn off their open mics. Because it's a little bit noisy over here. Thank you. Okay. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. Um, so the man of action is basically uh, creating a very strong flow and uh, the masculine energy is a very hard energy, very focused energy and the feminine energy tends to respond to it. 
by basically keeping a very strong focus and creating as much flow as they can and not wavering from it, they start transforming everybody and everything around them to go along with them, to yeah, in a way adapt to them because they are the stable factor in the world and so everything is slowly but surely adjusting to them and what they want to happen uh, will happen. Um, often people who have this uh, manufacturing quality they're often uh, um, yeah, leaders, not by definition good leaders, but very steadfast leaders and because they uh, have an utter um, yeah, determination, focus and belief and total, um, they give themselves totally to their mission, to their goals. They have a very strong influence on the energetic world around them. So the last type of uh, masculine energy is the um, man behind the screens and it's a little bit more of the of the opposite of the man of action they are more um, really like a Machiavelli a great eminence um, who has like a personal mission or personal goal uh, what they want to achieve um, but rather than manifest their own power um, they're more looking at the harmony what is going on, what is happening, and um, where would my adjustment create the biggest effect. So they're more in a way similar to the, um, uh, to the healer scientist, but whereas a healer scientist tends to work with his or her own energy to yeah, in a way manipulate things themselves, um, the man behind the screens is often in a way trying to get other people to manipulate the energy by inspiring them or yeah, um, trying to have, go in, convince them to move in a certain direction or do certain things um, also often in conjunction with other powers they are uh, working yeah, in, a way of, in a way of getting a whole group to function as a whole or as a group and also then as a group also to yeah, perform a mission. So um, on a more individual level the men of action are not very useful but if you want to set up like a, a, a company or a family or uh, an egregore or any group effort then it is very necessary to have people with this yeah, man behind the screens qualities to harmonize the group and to um, make sure that everybody knows their place, knows their function and that the group interacts in a, in a, in a good way. It's a very little bit like a lubricant also for uh, the group process. So are there more questions about the masculine side of the cocoon? Oh yeah, uh, also how to, um, how to see it. So. Um, the, uh, the scout can in a way be recognized because the cocoon has, you could say, little yeah, tentacles, fingers, little feelers everywhere. So they're quite rounded, um, like little yeah, bubbles sticking out of the cocoon. So this creates yeah, a, a better sensitivity towards the energies around them. And this is what creates the qualities of the scout. What you often see is that the uh, cocoon of a, um, uh, yeah, of, um, a healer scientist, they kind of have a, like under the surface layer of the cocoon, it is very, yeah, there's kind of a filter there um, because of their uh, mental framework. Uh, all the impulses are in a way translated into an internal model and they're categorized. Um, and uh, so this is how you can tell if a person has this yeah, healer scientist quality. Um, what you see with the man of action is that there's a very strong connection to all the chakras, to all the energy centers. Um, so in a way the cocoon is instead of just focusing, not just focusing outward, but also focusing inward in creating little tunnels 
between the chakras and the external energy. So basically around the areas where the chakras are there's little bulges in the cocoon. So that the inner focus and outer focus become one. Um, what you find often in the, um, the person who's the, the uh, man behind the scenes is often that there are little, yeah, you could say little pools in the uh, in the cocoon. So there are little openings, which in which outside energies can go in and mingle. So they have a little uh, like microcosmos uh, in parts of their cocoon, so they can. You may observe and see what is going on outside of them within their own influence sphere. So it's also kind of a modeling system, uh, just like uh, happens with the, uh, um, uh, the healer scientist. But it is in a way um, less controlled, less categorized. It is a little bit, little bit more fluid um, for this type of person. Um, another very important thing about the cocoon is, the, um, is whether a person is um, more of a dreamer or more of a, a stalker. So uh, a stalker is very good at getting things done within the, the reality we live in and the dreamer is better at functioning in other realities. So basically in front of the uh, third chakra, so the stomach, there is a, a structure a little bit like a balcony. And if this is very big it, and uh, curved upward, it's in a way allowing, pushing these energies which come out of your third chakra, so your power, your manifestation energy, is pushed upward into these higher chakras, higher vibrations, higher realms. And the size and breadth of this structure um, makes a person more or less a dreamer. So in a way if the structure is not there then the energy of the third chakra is just manifesting in this world and it's yeah, basically on an ego level, on a uh, horizontal level. So then the person has a lot of control over the energies and influence of the energies which are in the world around them. So they're generally good at physical things, at uh, social things, at working with money. Um, and if these energies go upward, then people tend to be more skilled with working with the subtle body. So working with uh, healing, uh, emotional processes, psychological processes, uh, spiritual processes. Um, a little bit, yeah, um, a little bit sick, so I'm also having a bit of a headache already all day. I'm feeling a little bit sick in the stomach. Uh, so I think I'll, like, quit quite soon. Um, but are there any more questions about what I've talked about up till now? Well, that's easy. Um, so one of the things I just wanted to uh, uh, reiterate um, is that anybody can learn how to um, see this, this cocoon and how to, um, to realize what your type is, what you are like. Um, these qualities, they change due to how much you, uh, you use them. So even though you may be born as a west wind with this connection to these higher worlds, if you never use it, you never do anything creative, you never imagine anything, you never fantasize, then this quality will not develop further and the other areas which you do work, if you work with your willpower a lot and you focus and you fight, then your, yeah, your east wind qualities will, will grow. So you can, in a way, slowly but surely change your qualities, but it is usually quite uh, easy to, to follow your own strengths. 
and it's also uh, more in tune with your mission in life to follow your original programming and by learning your own pro your own type you can also learn what are your weaknesses what are the parts where you need other people and uh, the system was in a way created based a lot more on um, yeah, people working together in a society, in a group, so it's not really going very well together with this individualized society. Because this idea that we in ourselves have to um, do everything and be like in a way the divinity incarnate is not part of the system. And although we may be working into this integration of all these powers, and some people have already mastered indeed this integration of powers and have all four winds or all four male qualities inherent in their energy bodies, most people do not. Um, so it is, and just by cooperating you can also learn about these qualities, you don't have to develop them yourself in your current incarnation. So, I want to move on a little bit um, on how to recognize in the energy the uh, qualities of the, uh, the four castes. Uh, so just to, uh, to repeat, um, the castes are the, um, the, the, the Sudra, uh, the uh, Vaisha, Kshatriya and Brahmana. So the Sudra is basically the person who tends towards the lowest vibration. They're usually very, uh, very practical. Uh, they're also very, uh, their consciousness is usually limited to themselves. Um, so often a person with, uh, with Sudra qualities, they won't have a very strongly developed um, uh, sensitivity. So often the heart and the throat chakras are relatively weak or blocked or in, inflexible and often the uh, lower chakras are quite strong because they're a sense of a self, their own desire, their own will it's also quite well developed so in a way um, if you look at like the energetic uh, structure like the lower chakras are often predominant in sutra types and the higher chakras are less well um, um, developed, especially in the, in the middle part. And the energy body of the sutra is kind of like fixed, very solid. If you look at the Vaisha type, these are the merchant type, the social types. Um, um, they often have um, a very well developed uh, uh, heart chakra and throat chakra, so they're very capable at uh, connecting to other people, to um, uh, and also the energy body reflects that. So often uh, the the heart chakra, the the throat chakra are very well developed, and the energy body is extremely flexible. They have a very sensitive energy body, a good sensitivity, also often a, a large aura, which is also quite flexible. So the difference also between the uh, yeah, the Kshatriya and the uh, Brahmana type with the other types, because in a way they are similar, as you will learn, is in the moral structures. Because the Kshatriya is in a way resembles again the Sudra in having a, a, a yeah, decreased sensitivity, very strong energy bodies, very fixed energy bodies, and also very strongly developed lower chakras. Um, but the difference is, is that often in the throat area and in the uh, crown area they will have a very strong moral structure and this is, can often be seen as um, um, the, if a person doesn't have a moral structure often in the center of the, of the chakra um, Okay, let me explain it another way. So, the moral structure is often at the core of a person's beliefs, or at the, uh, it is guiding the, how they listen to the world, how they manifest themselves in the world. So it is really at the center of the throat chakra, and also at the center of the crown chakra. 
because it determines what types of energies they and inspirations they allow themselves to connect to. Uh, so the quality and the size of this moral structure, of this core um, yeah, uh, part of the, of the chakra, shows how moral or immoral the person is. And the moral or immoral doesn't make a person good or evil. Uh, they just have a set of values which to them are important and which they will abide to. Uh, so it doesn't tell you anything about whether the person is working for the dark or light side of cosmos or uh, whether they are working for uh, an arimanic cosmos or divine or satanic or luciferic cosmos. It has nothing to do with that. Um, so this is basically the essential part uh, by which they are uh, distinguished. And in the Brahmana type, they again have an energy body similar to the, to the Vaishya, very flexible, very mobile, uh, very open, uh, and also focused more on, uh, on talking, on connecting, and the higher chakras uh, as well, because they work a lot with this, uh, with this inspiration. Um, and you can have a lot of crossings, of course, because a person uh, is in a way composed of these four, uh, three parts. So, uh, four you could say, like either they are a dreamer or uh, a stalker, so they are manifesting themselves in higher worlds or this world. They can be either of the four winds, so they either have uh, as a purpose to, to stabilize things uh, or to bring uh, new impulses, which are the east wind and the west wind, or they are here to heal other people or to, to bring knowledge and to criticize, which are the south wind and the north wind. How they do it can be either by connection, which is the scout, by direct manipulation, which is the healer scientist, by setting an example, which is the man of action, or by, in a way, aiding, being uh, more of a catalyst to the process, which is the uh, uh, man behind the screens and they can do it in these four caste areas so the sutra is often focused on uh, getting uh, results for themselves um, so their, their main work area is also their direct environment and their own being uh, the Vaisha has as a focus like the, 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 the social interaction so basically um, the function of society and often has a stimulating function. Uh, the Kshatriya has in a way a limiting function to this uh, uh, process of the development of society. So they're also focused on society um, but a lot more on uh, yeah, giving moral guidance so they want things to develop yeah, totally. Um, or in yeah, the way they just want to go, but they're often focused also in blocking things which are wrong or stimulating things which they consider right. And the Brahmana caste is, uh, yeah, again, a stimulating force, um, bringing new impulses into, uh, yeah, into society, but also into themselves, and generating knowledge for all the other castes to use. Okay. Yes. Um, so, if there is no more questions, I would like to to stop a little bit early today because I'm a little bit ill. Um, yeah, the plan was to do it once a month, but actually, in the beginning of next month, I will be in uh, in France on the, uh, on a retreat. So. Uh, it will have to be a little bit later. I will email you guys um, when that will be. It's probably like halfway in, uh, in May because I will be coming back around the 11th, so somewhere around that time. Okay, sorry I have to cut it a little bit short. Um, I'll just wait a little bit to see if there's any questions.
see any questions coming. So, okay, thank you all for listening. I'll uh, email the link to you and uh, then we'll continue in May. Okay, bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye, thank you. Good luck practicing bye, with this. Thank you.